Dev boards with microcontrollers have made prototyping and learning so much easier. So I'm looking at this uh, PIC microcontroller that I used in one of my undergraduate modules almost 15 years ago. I know I'm showing my age, but I remember we took like a few days to get just the hello world blinky working. And you know, today dev boards have literally reduced the time, uh, the time taken to getting to that blinky stage to a few seconds. I have dev boards such as the NRF52 for BLE, the ESP8266 for Wi-Fi, the simple at Mega 328P on the Arduino Uno, or even a more powerful STM32H7 on the Arduino Potenta board. So in the previous video, I shared on how to create a schematic with just these dev boards as schematic symbols and connecting them up. Now we don't always need to extract out that microcontroller chip out of that dev board into our custom PCB. Sometimes a smaller form factor of the dev board with the same features is already made available. For example, a compute module such as the Raspberry Pi Compute Module 4 is designed for integration into end products. Particle IO also makes hardware in two form factors. One form is designed for rapid iteration and deployment with header pins and Adafruit feather specifications. A second form with the same features is available for a surface mountable design that accelerates PCB assembly. But in today's video, I want to share how to take out that microcontroller chip from the dev board and then incorporate it in our schematic so that we only add in components that is required for our project. The first step in doing that is to put all the available information on the table. The microcontroller that my project is using is Atmel's SAM D21G. So I will refer to its data sheet. This microcontroller is part of the Robodyne M0 mini dev board, hence both the schematic and the pinout diagram will also be the reference material. Now as a counter check, I also downloaded the Arduino Zero schematic diagram as well as Adafruit's M0 Express board, which has a pinout diagram and its related schematic. I also got another dev board from SparkFun that also has the same microcontroller and downloaded its schematic. The variant table in the data sheet describes the differences and I chose this particular one Sam D21 G18AU because you don't need to buy in bulk and many of the dev boards that I refer to also use this exact same variant. I am just so so grateful to the teams from say Adafruit, Arduino, SparkFun and many many other people that are consistently sharing their open source hardware materials that we can all learn from. So the next crucial step is the pin mapping. Here we will use the various open source materials that we gathered to cross check the connections for net labels, the Arduino pins and the corresponding microcontroller pins. So the first thing we are going to do is list down all of these net labels and and do a pin mapping. So let's go through the first one, which is GPS data D0. Now D0 is the Arduino pin name. What does it correspond to in the SAM D21G microcontroller pin? Well, for this, let's refer to the schematic of the dev board that I'm using. So let's look at D0 and here you can see that D0 is PA11. So if you go to SparkFun and also zoom into the microcontroller here, here we will also be able to locate D0 is PA11. And finally in the Adafruit one, here you go, D0 is PA11 once again. So now that we have cross-checked all of these uh, schematics, we can simply write it down here. It is D0 and PA11. So let's go to LoRa G0 similarly. It is corresponding to D1 in Arduino. In Sam D21, in Robodyne M0 mini board, it is PA10. Yup, D1 is again confirmed to be PA10 in SparkFun and D1 is also PA10 in the Adafruit board. So once again, we can come here and edit and say that D0, sorry, D1 is PA10. So I'm going to go ahead and basically complete the rest of the pins. And I have completed most of the GPIO based pins and I'm left with the three serial pins. 
so maybe I'll just uh, choose a different highlighter so let's go for the mossy pin as you can see it's right here in the ICSP connector but sometimes it is also connected not only to the connector but also to the microcontroller so in this case it is PB10 and yep it is PB10 here and yep in the Adafruit 1 it's also showing PB10 similarly let's do the clock and the miso so the clock here that I used is also part of the ICSP connector, but we should locate it over here in the microcontroller and it should have the same net label SCK in this case. And it is PB11, confirmed that it's PB11 and yep, SCK clock is PB11. And finally for the MISO, I'm using uh, once again the connector which is D12 and it seems to be PA19. Yep, it is PA19 and confirm one more time that it is PA19 which is D12. Now finally, it is definitely great to refer to the data sheet as well, especially the table which is usually named as port function multiplexing because one pin can be used for many, many features. As you can see here, I did some notes on which are the S SPI pins and which are the pins that I have used. While datasheet can be useful to know about the pins of SAMD21, it is actually the Arduino SAMD bootloader code that will tell us more about the pin mapping. So let's search for say a pin PA09 here. Here you will see links to some files, the header files where the pin mapping details are there. And after searching through, I would like to zoom into these files called variant.cpp. So why don't we look for the variant for Arduino Zero? So I'll go under the folder variants and find Arduino Zero and variant.cpp. So this is exactly where all the pins are defined, especially the pin for SAMD21 and the corresponding Arduino Zero board pin. For example, the TX and the RX pin that we used is once again confirmed to be PB03, PA27, or even the SWD pins such as SW clock and SWDIO. All right, so looks like I have the pin map table ready. And since I have cross-checked it uh, using multiple sources, I'm pretty confident that these are accurate. But then again, until we manufacture the PCB, we will never know. So now that we have this pin map table, we can bravely delete this uh, schematic symbol for the dev board and replace it with the microcontroller symbol. So in this case, I am using the AUT. So now the pins here in the microcontroller is corresponding to the table that we have created. So I am now going to create the net labels and connect them to the SAMD21 G pins. So let's start with the GPS data, which is PA11. And after that, LoRa G0, LoRa CS, LoRa Reset, E-Ink Reset, E-Ink DC, E-Ink Chip Select. And finally, the last three SPI pins, which is at PB10 and clock. And finally, MISO for this, I have to move this data label a little bit. All right, so we have all the pins, the 11 pins connected from the pin mapping table. So after we have settled the pins that we are using specific to our project, the next uh, step is to connect some other pins that are generic to a lot of the microcontrollers that we will be pulling it out of the dev board. And this was exactly where I wasn't really sure where to begin. So I kind of have a framework. So for example, the power and the ground pins, the reset pin, and maybe some TX and RX LEDs for debugging and status, or even the serial wire debug pin for uploading the bootloader. So why don't we start with the power pins, which are located right here. And for this, we can once again, refer to the schematic and the data sheets. So it's great to refer to the schematic because this is where we will start seeing pattern and we can learn certain concepts. So for example, if we look at the power pins here, we will see that generally they are being connected to decoupling capacitors. And it is the same in the spark fun as well. Here you see they are adding a couple of uh, decoupling capacitors of 0.1 microfarad. And finally, it is also very, very similar to the Adafruit board. So I'm gonna construct something very similar with these four power pins. 
All right, so seems like it's done. I've connected lots of decoupling capacitors and then to the ground, also to 3.3 volts with a power flag. The next obvious one is to look at the ground and seems like they are simply connected to the ground. So I will go ahead and connect it to the common ground. The next thing to look at is the reset pin, which will be used to reset the microcontroller. And typically it is pulled up via a resistor and it is also connected to a push button if you want uh, the user to be able to do that. And we can see very similar things being done to the SparkFun board. So I am going to do something very, very similar starting with the resistor, which is being pulled up. But we also have the option to put a push button to trigger the reset. All right, so maybe I'll put a value of 10K here. Now it is useful to have some LEDs when we are doing the transmission and the reception. And it's also good to know the pins that they are connected to. So in this case, it's PB0 for RX LED and PB27 for TX LED. So let me connect the same thing to PA27 and similarly RX LED, which is connected to PB03. And as part of the LED circuit, we need the resistor, the LED, and uh, they are being connected to one side, the 3.3 volts. And on the other side, it will be the TX LED. And finally, I can copy the entire thing and change the data label to RX LED. The final part, which I think is important, is the serial wire debug interface, which can be used to debug as well as upload the bootloader. It will be part of a 10-pin uh, JTAG compatible SWD interface. As you can see, the data sheet has a little bit more information, but these are the pins that we need to connect to. We also need to find out where are the SWD clock and the IO pins. We do know what is reset already. And of course, the data sheet always comes in handy. They are PA30 and PA31. So let me quickly create the data labels here. So I had to do a slight arrangement here in order for the data labels to be shown. And finally, let's search for the JTAG 10 pin connector. So we can once again start with the power and ground. These two pins will be connected to the ground. So we already have the net labels prepared. So we have SWDIO. SWCLK and finally RST and pin 6 and 8 are not connected. All right, so looks like we have added the power, the ground, the reset, the TX RX LEDs, we even created a circuit for it as well as the SWD connector. Final thing we should do is of course the electrical rules check. Let's start with the no connect because that will be easiest to deal with. So let me just put the no connect pins. And I am going to run the electrical rules check again, and there are only a couple. All right, yep, there is a power flag here, which we don't need anymore because I have already put it as part of the microcontroller. Let me run it again. There's one more no connect pin. All right, so it says it doesn't know what is the label here. That's because I believe we need to put the data label right here as RST. Okay, so now that I have connected the RST net labels, let me run it for one last time and it's all good. When I first started out incorporating the microcontroller from a dev board into my own design, I didn't really know where to start or which pins or features to zoom into. Yes, I understand that there are data sheets available or schematics available, but which groups are um, or features are more important? For example, the power, the ground, the TX, RX LEDs, the reset pin. These are some common features that we can use in almost any microcontroller that we want to incorporate into our design. So I hope you found this video useful and thanks for watching. See you next time.